Wizard Warfare is a grand strategy game, similar to other Master of Magic inspired games like Age of Wonders, Warlock Master of the Arcane, Eador, etc. And if you like those games, this one will almost certainly appeal to you as well. Wizard Warfare feels like an interesting mix between Civilization and Dominions, or perhaps Conquest of Elysium. The way you interact with cities is similar to Civilization, you can choose to build buildings or units. You can make workers who can link your cities up with roads, or make tile improvements. But the way battles are fought is similar to Dominions, where you get a battle report and you can choose to watch the battle, but you do not have any direct control over how your units fight during the battle. The most you can do is tell your troops how you want them to behave in battle before sending them in using the battle setup screen. Here you can manually set positions or give custom orders. The troops behave sensibly in battle, and I haven't had a situation where I wish I'd been able to control them directly. But if you're the kind of person that likes manual control over everything, this system may not be so nice for you. On the city screen you've got your income in the top left, as well as AI options for the city. You can tell the city to optimize for a particular resource at the cost of other ones, like focusing on money or production. Most of the time the balanced AI should be fine. In the bottom left you've got your build queue, where you can queue up units and structures to be built. Over in the top right you can see all the buildings your city already has and sell them off if you want to. Then in the bottom right you've got your militia and your construction options. The militia are troops that are always available to defend the city and certain structures provide more militia when you build them. If you're ever confused, the game has a fantastic built-in encyclopedia. It'll tell you everything you could possibly want to know, and more. There's a lot of detail under the hood. Every unit has its own character sheet, which you can see when you right-click the unit. You can read all about the unit's strengths, weaknesses, equipment, and so on, on this character sheet. It's pretty nice because this level of detail is kind of rare, and I really appreciate it. So let's talk about the necromancy. When making a new game, you choose your wizard, and you can choose the wizard's primary school of magic. For necromancy, you of course want to specialize in death magic. Specializing in this allowed me to produce various necromancy spellcaster units over the course of the game. The weakest of these units is the Grave Digger. When you make them, they'll also have a small chance to be capable of demonic or astral magic. Next up from the Grave Digger is the Reanimator which is just a higher quality unit cut of the same cloth. More mana, stronger magic skills, more research points, etc. Finally, you have the Necromancy unit, which is the strongest one available. It starts with a minimum of 3 death magic points, with the chance of an extra death magic point, or a demonic or astral point. In order to acquire spells, you need to do research. Research points are produced by cities, and certain structures provide more points. For example, things like the Wizard's Tower, the Scribe, the Library, etc. You can choose to research one of the three schools of magic, Conjuration, Evocation, or Enchantment. Each of these schools has five levels in it, and each level provides different strategic and ritual spells. Strategic spells are the kind that are used by spellcaster units during battles, and these spells are fueled by these units' own personal mana pools. For necromancers, this is stuff like Dark Bolts, Healing Undead, Buffing and Debuffing Units, and Reanimating Dead Soldiers on the Battlefield. Ritual spells are conducted outside of battle by spellcasters and use your nation's global mana pool. Conjuration ritual spells are mostly about summoning permanent units, like zombies, skeletons, etc. And these units cost mana instead of gold for their upkeep. For necromancy conjuration rituals, you've got summon skeletons, which produces very weak, naked skeletons, summon zombies, which produces tough zombies whose bite afflicts the enemy with plague, summon skeleton archers and summon skeleton warriors. These spells produce tough skeletons with weapons and armor. Summon skeleton cavalry, which produces swift but weak undead cavalry, summon plague spewers. Plague Spewers are very tough, armoured zombies that vomit onto enemies of decent range and infect them with the plague. The plague will then spread to other nearby units and they'll all start losing health. I really like the Plague Spewers. Summon Death Knights. 
The Death Knights are Foot Knights that are just very badass. Slow but tanky and they do lots of damage. Finally you have Summon White Dragon, which is the strongest necromancy conjuration ritual. The White Dragons are very very good. They kick down castle gates like the SWAT team kicks in a Call of Duty player's door and they fly around the battlefield and breathe frost breath on the enemy. The flying thing is the best thing about them because they close the distance instantly. The frost breath will also kill scores of enemy troops, which can then be reanimated to devastate the battlefield even more. For evocation rituals, you've got locusts, which send swarms of locusts at an enemy city to ravage it and destroy its food production, which will then halt or reverse that city's population growth. Nightmares, which can be cast on an enemy army to cause psionic damage to all of its soldiers. Plague, which will cause a great pestilence in the city and kill off its population. And Phantasmagoria, which is a stronger version of Nightmares. For the enchantment category, you've got Resist Frost, which buffs the squad's frost resistance. Blood Sacrifice, which converts city population into mana. Barren Terrain, which destroys the fertility of a terrain tile. Smothering Darkness, which is an enchantment that cloaks the world in darkness. It buffs evil units like undead and demons. And finally, the best one is Zombie Apocalypse. This is the shining jewel of the enchantment category. It curses the entire world, and whenever creatures die on the battlefield, anywhere in the world, they arise as zombies under your control. The spell is immensely useful. When you kill 120 enemies, you then get 120 zombies to add to your army. I'm quite impressed with Wizard Warfare. It runs very smoothly, I've encountered no bugs. The interface is intuitive and features like the built-in encyclopedia really contribute to the user experience. It feels like a quality and nicely polished game, and all for a very reasonable price of about 5 bucks. As a grand strategy game, it can only score very well for mini mechanics. I'm scoring it a 9.4 out of 10. You've of course got basically unlimited minions. They're all useful and they're all permanent. The minion diversity is very high, especially if you consider the minions outside of the necromancy category as well. During my playthrough, I also made use of demons and strange things from the astral category. The diversity I experienced is as follows. Skeletons, Zombies, Death Knights, White Dragon, Imps, Phantom Warriors, and Hellhounds. I count seven distinct minion types. I don't consider subtypes like Skeleton Archers and Warriors to be different, these are all skeletons. There are many other demonic and astral summons, but your necromancers only ever seem to have one point in the alternative schools of magic, so you're limited to the basic stuff. My criticisms of the game would be that if you compare it to other similar games, the list of magic feels a bit short. There's only three categories to research, and you research everything very quickly. I spent more time with a maxed out research than I did researching things. It also doesn't have heroes or commander units. Sometimes less is more, but I feel like if there was more than conjuration, evocation, and enchantment to research, there'd be more variety. The game could also add things like ghouls, vampires, liches, etc. to boost its diversity up so I can grant it a 10 out of 10. Thanks for watching, I hope this video has been informative. I've got more videos on necromancy, games, books, etc. coming soon.